Hello and welcome to another lesson where I'll be going over the entire plot of an inspector calls this play within five minutes. The reason why I am condensing all the major events within this play into five minutes is because sometimes it's really get easy to get wrapped up in the detail of the play. It's really easy to kind of drown in all uh, reams and reams of information and revision notes, mind maps and all that stuff and it can be really really difficult to take a step back and think okay now I've got my mocks coming up, now I've got my exams coming up, do I know all the key events within the play? So I thought this would be a really useful and handy revision tool that you can turn to when revising the major key events within an inspector call. So let's get into it, inspector calls in five minutes. Now remember that the play starts with Sheila and Gerald Croft in the Burling household celebrating their engagement. Even if we know that Sheila is a little bit annoyed at Gerald because he basically ignored her the previous summer, she accepts the ring that he offers her to the delight of her entire family and especially Mr Burling who is extremely pleased because he runs a company that's the a rival of the Croft company okay so he has his own manufacturing company and if if Sheila and Gerald get married they will be able to merge the business together and he will really benefit from this now Mr Bur Burling sets Eric and Gerald to the side and they talk about the future Mr Burling uh, reveals that he's very myopic his mind is up in the air he basically says that Firstly, the Germans don't want world war, so you know the likelihood of First World War happening is very slim. The Titanic will never sink, and of course, every man has to look after his own business himself. Society does not have any responsibility towards the poor to help them out. Whilst he's pontificating and telling uh, both Eric and Gerald about this, an inspector arrives. Edna goes, finds him uh, waiting at the door, brings him in. And Inspector Gould tells them that a lady called Eva Smith has committed suicide and died at the infirmary and it's actually all of their fault. Inspector Gould starts by blaming Mr Burling who fired her from his factory because Eva Smith wanted to ask for more wages for slightly fairer pay and she got all of the women in the factory. She organised them into a group where they protested for more wages and Mr Burling simply fired her. Then Inspector Gould turns to Sheila and he, t he says that Sheila is also responsible for Eva Smith's death because Eva Smith after being fired was able to get a job in a shop called Millwoods where Sheila shopped. However, Sheila used her influence because she was very jealous of Eva Smith's beauty to have have her fired. Inspector Gould then turns to Gerald Croft. Gerald Croft who was supposed to be engaged to Sheila and he uh, unveils the fact that Eva Smith because she was unable to get any more jobs she had to lead a very different sort of life. In other words she had to become a prostitute and whilst working as a prostitute uh, and where people knew in the palace bar prostitutes hung around, Gerald Croft met her and he made her his mistress over the summer, over the previous summer and he used her for sex and afterwards he just basically discarded her as if she was a piece of rubbish. Next, Inspector Gould turns to Mrs Burling and he blames her because she used her influence over her charity to reject Daisy Renton when she was seeking help because she was pregnant. Then finally, uh, blame is shifted to Eric Burling as well, okay? So Eric is also blamed because he also met Daisy whilst she was working uh, at the palace bar just like Gerald and he started a relationship, he was using her and then obviously ended up making her pregnant. So Mrs Burling actually uh, indirectly influenced the death of both Daisy Renton but also her grandchild. Now Gerald leaves and investigates okay so he leaves under the guise and under the pretense that he's really sad, he's really sorry all of this happens however he goes off and investigates and discovers that the inspector actually doesn't exist and he even questions whether this girl, this person who the inspector is talking about, does she even exist? Maybe there were four or five girls that were affected by them. He comes back and tells them the news and we learn that Gerald, Mr Belling and Mrs Belling are really pleased, they're delighted they can cover all of this up. However, Eric and Sheila are disappointed. They're disappointed in them and they're disappointed that they've not learned anything from this encounter with Inspector Gore. And finally, whilst there's now a complete divide between the family with Sheila and Eric wanting to change, whilst Gerald, Mr and Mrs Burling not wanting to change, they get a call, okay? So the phone rings and they're told that a girl has recently killed herself in the infirmary and there's an officer on the way to ask the Burling family about their role in her suicide. So of course the play has a circular structure. It starts off with the de death of a girl and ends with the death of a girl. So that's really it when it comes to knowing the key events to revise when considering inspector calls within five minutes. Thank you for listening.